Hi, this is uh, Matthijs Beckers, the nuclear humanist. Um, I've been away for a while. At least it feels like I've been away for a while. Um, the reason is because my uh, depression flared up pretty, pretty bad. Um, right now there are prolonged periods in a day when I simply feel like there's a void inside me and I don't have any energy to go forward. In fact, right now I'm not really, not really, you know, there's nothing coming out, but I'm going to try it nonetheless because, you know, I want to, I want to be, I, I want to get working again and, um, do something productive with my time. Um, so there's a couple of problems right now. Uh, I'm on, um, I get paid by a Dutch government insurance company organization. Um, every Dutch person who is, uh, who has a job in the Netherlands pays uh, a, a fixed amount of money in order to pay for, in order to, it's it's a it's an insurance policy. So, the amount of money you put in is the amount of money you can get out once you lose your job. So it's it's you know, so that you don't become, um, so that you don't go bankrupt immediately. And uh, I've been on this program for far too long or for far too long you can you can be on it indefinitely if you're sick enough and uh, to be quite frank i'm sick and tired of it i don't like being sick i hate it um you know uh it limits my possibilities at this moment they are saying that i shouldn't go forward with a possibility that has been offered to me which is uh which is really frustrating um they've also uh they've also said that they would be looking into my uh into my youtube activities and <clears throat> my writing activities so i don't know what they're planning to do you know they have a habit of kicking people off as soon as they think well they are working pretty hard right now and uh and uh, we don't think that they are sick enough to uh, to remain uh, in our insurance so uh, yeah i'm i'm at this moment I'm, uh, I'm 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 in a really tight spot i don't know what i should do um in the current um in my current situation i will be good until uh, april 2019 so this means that they will keep paying me monthly salaries up until uh, april 2019 but um that's only if if I maintain a uh, workload factor of sixty five to fifty five percent, which oh, uh, which means no no, it's a non workload factor of fifty five to sixty five percent, which means that they assume that I cannot work sixty five percent of the time because of my uh, condition, and this bothers the heck out of me. You know, this is some institutionalized uh stuff i get it um you know the rules are there uh, I'm, but you know i need to take care of my family and uh, they don't make it any easier on me <clears throat> you know perhaps um perhaps they will put me into 80 percent again uh which I was for two years prior to this year, which means that you can only work for 20% of the time. Um, but the problem is that my affliction is mental. You know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a brain disease, basically. Um, I've been diagnosed with a recurring depression of a chronic nature with a chronic nature which means that i that my um <clears throat> which means that my health oscillates basically 
my mental health oscillates. So if I push myself too hard and I go up, 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 and I keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, then there will be a free fall again. And I will sink back into the mud hole and uh, have to try to get out again. And this is a continuously repeating <clears throat> repeating situation. Um, it's like a vicious circle. Uh, very hard to get out of. So um, next Tuesday I will be visiting the psychiatrist again uh, yesterday i visited the psychologist asked for more help um because you know i want to do something with my life i want to be a contributing member of this community and uh, do stuff that means something to me and means something to other people and you know i've got a feeling that i'm this close you know i can I can almost grasp up, grasp opportunities, and I know a lot of very interesting people who uh, who work in academia and who have uh, had great success in um, in in business. You know, and these people these people have have helped me and are still willing to help me. And um, I don't know if I want to rely too much longer on this insurance thing um, because you know they are sticking so they're imposing so many regulations and uh, god I'm sounding like a libertarian right now <laughs> which I'm absolutely not <laughs> but you know it's it's hard um, they don't understand men mental illnesses very well so I'm looking uh, for ways to diversify my activities, to diversify my income, and to eventually find a way that I can be self-sufficient rather than... Uh... Wow. By the way, right now, there's a tremendous amount of glare, so my face is becoming white. That's because the sun is shining in my uh, neighbor's, uh, in my neighbor's window. Uh Perhaps I'm going to shut it. I don't know. Uh, so that's how things are going at home. Um, you know, my family, my family, they, they, they don't have, uh, they don't have the husband and the father they deserve at this moment. So um, I'm pretty, pretty bummed by that. Uh, but you know what? <clears throat> It takes a long while to get over this. It's not an easy fix. It's not something I am going to do with a, you know, the flick of a switch. I've been struggling with this situation at least, at least for 10 years right now. And uh, my history and uh, mental, mental shit goes back even way further than that, all the way back to, you know, 17, 18, 19 years ago. So it's been a long struggle. But that's enough about that. I want to I want to talk about books. I want to talk about books because I'm passionate about books. I love to read. I love to write. And um, you know, normally uh, I I've got a good stack of books right now. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you what kind of books I usually read. Uh, so I don't know if you know this. So this here is. H22, it's a book which has been written by um, Christopher Hitchens, who was um, a very outspoken atheist. And, uh, you know, this is also a channel about humanism. So at some, sometimes I have to proclaim, you know, I'm a card-carrying atheist, anti-theist, which doesn't really mean... We, you know, it doesn't mean that I, I want the abolishment of all original religion. Um, if people if, if people do good things because they are part of some community, that's that's okay. But you know, I don't want it to dictate anything in uh, in, uh, in, in 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 public life. Uh, I don't want them to di dictate anything in schools and uh, government. Uh, no way. Keep them out. Keep them. Keep them. Keep the church and uh, state and uh, public life separated, please. But 
why I read this stuff is because because of the the vocabulary. So, as many of you know, I'm not I'm not an, uh, I I wasn't born in an English speaking country, and I still live in the Netherlands, which is a, a Dutch speaking country. So, Dutch is the main language. I I am born in a region which has a very strong dialect, which sounds a little bit like German and Dutch mixed together. So um, I can speak my dialect, I can speak Dutch, I can speak English, French, and German. So <clears throat> I'm a polyglot in a sense, and um, I need to work on my vocabulary continuously because uh, I want to write books, and I want to read books, and I want to understand the world better. So books help me with it. So this is Hitch 22. If you're into it's it's a memoir basically. Uh if you're into that kind of stuff, I don't know. I don't I don't presume you are, so uh, but I can I can recommend it. It's it's good. It's pretty good. The second one that I don't want to recommend um and this is for a very special reason is uh Foundational of All Sorts of Creationism, which is this book here. Let's see. It was written by a guy called uh, Aaron Ra. And uh, why I cannot endorse this book is the same reason why he couldn't endorse one of my books. So he was running for a position in the Senate or in the government. I, I can't remember Congress or the Senate of, of Texas. And... Um, I wanted to support him, obviously, because I was a long-time fan. I, I, I met him in Utrecht once, uh, had dinner with him even, um, and I wanted to know what his uh, point of view on nuclear was, whether he would support it or, you know. And he's also a big fan of Bernie Sanders, so wait a second. I'm going to close this. That's better. I fixed the glare issue because it was it, it, it was looking like an Archimedes death ray out there. So <laughs> we we would we don't want to you know we don't want to video me, video me while I'm uh, sitting here uh, smoking <laughs> because like some ant in the sun rays, you know. Okay, so uh, back on topic. Um, Aaron Ra, he, he was running for Texas Senate, I believe. In any case, Aaron Ra, um, I asked him, what is your stance on uh, nuclear energy? Or what is your stance on environmental issues like climate change and energy? And um, he came back to me with some kind of uh, for, uh, with, with some kind of answer. You know, he, he's a Bernie crat. He likes Bernie Sanders a lot, which is okay, you know. I can understand why why people like Bernie Sanders. And everybody has a right to, you know, to like whoever he wants. Just doesn't mean that we all have to agree with him or her and in in this in this case I I can't agree, but you know, there's also things about Bernie Sanders that I'm not particularly fond of. One of which is his uh is his uh stance on nuclear energy so aaron proved to be you know he he took the the renew 100 renewable narrative hook line and sinker and uh so he has gotten all my books which i've written so far and uh, he simply ignored them and when i asked well would you like to read them he said well i have no time um i'm writing my own book that's fine you know I can't see into people, other people's timetables. So at some point, um, I asked permission for a quote of his to use in my book, and I did, which was way before this exchange, by the way. And, uh, you know, I had a feeling that we might be able to reciprocate some information exchange or whatever. But he wasn't taking any of it. No, I tried my best. I tried to reason with him over the email and such. And uh, he turned, you know, um, it's about rationality, reason, and science. And uh, 
he wasn't forthcoming on those issues. So, you know what? If you, do, if you want to do it for your own hobby horse, that's okay. You know, if you want to talk about creationism and uh, about biology and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, paleobiology and such, you know, that's fine. That's fine. I love that stuff. I really do. But, you know, if, if I reach out to him and say, well, you are going to try to be a legislative person and you need to decide on matters about climate change and energy uh, why don't you consider this or why don't you consider that and if you don't have the time to consider it but you want to pass judgment about it well that's a bit i don't i don't like that that's something which i don't like and that's the moment when i said okay i'm done uh, I'm no longer going to be a fanboy of uh, Aaron Ra. I'm not. I'm not a fanboy of anybody. Um, I don't follow people blindly. You shouldn't either. You shouldn't follow me blindly. You should always question my motives. So what I want to do is I want to show you some stuff you really would would love to read um, if you're into energy stuff. So the first one is by as a study by Rauli Partanen and he, he he wrote it for Energy for Humanity which is an which is an NGO in England it's called uh, Decarbonizing Cities Helsinki Metropolitan Area it's a really really excellent well it's it's a booklet it's not really a book it only has you know it has like uh, 40 40 something pages so it's 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 uh you can get through it pretty quickly and um, it it is a det detailed analysis about uh, it's a detailed analysis on how to decarbonize a big city like Helsinki for instance using a molten salt reactor that uh, that is being deployed to get electricity uh, process heat for fuels and um, I can't remember oh and uh, for central heating for uh, distributing heat throughout the city which is a really good idea then there is this the european climate leadership report 2017 also by energy for humanity um i will put the links up in the description below so so that you can see what they are about um then there's this one i, I believe that holly i believe that Raleigh has uh Revise this one. It's Climate Gamble. You know, and I'm, I'm just showing you the books that I have lying around right now. Um, I'm not singling these books out in any case, because there's also The Road Map to Nowhere by uh, Mike Conley and uh, Tim Maloney, which is free, which you can get on the internet. Um, but you really should read if you're into, you know, debunking 100% renewable thesis. Um First, I want to show you my own book. So I've, I've written three so far. So this one is Highway to Dystopia. And uh, it's a bit of a, it's a little bit of, you know, prosaic. Uh, contains a lot of prose. Um, it's not the best book, but it's the first book I wrote. So still contains a lot of errors. Um, uh, grammar typos and such so but i you know i had to do everything myself i didn't have any help so you know it's understandable i don't have the money to pay for an editor for instance i don't have the money to pay for a proofreader so yeah that's that this is my second book which is called science a la carte and uh, same same here it's also this is a my first my first attempt at um, at um, including nuclear in the uh, in the energy debate um, it was edited by George Erickson who is a, who is also an author uh, he wrote uh, unintended consequences the the lie that the lie that killed millions a really good book um, and now, and this is the one that got me, that got my blood, that got my blood flowing. And this one is called Sellout by Victoria Bruce 
um as you can see i'm not finished yet I've, i i still have my, uh, my my i still have my flap in there you know my reading flap i'm about oh, i don't know uh, two thirds in two thirds in and um this one i really really would like to uh um uh, if you want to you know if you want to read a book about uh People who try to reinvigorate a mining industry, in particular the iron mining and uh, rare earths, heavy rare earths, then this is for you. It's also a, it also has a personal touch. So it basically is the uh, it's basically um, the adventure of Jim Kennedy. Jim Kennedy is a. He, he, I know Jim Kennedy. We met in St. Louis once. This uh, this book is concentrated around a mine called P. Rich, which is in um, which is which is in uh, in Missouri, a uh, couple of miles south from uh, from St. Louis. And uh, Jim Kennedy has had a pretty eventful life, and it's being described in that book, but. The main premise is his struggle to get for and initially to get the mine running, um, to uh, you know because it's it's it really is a very good mine. Uh, it has a very high, uh, very high quality iron ore deposit, a big chunk of iron basically, which is uh, which is uh, which is uh, buried beneath you know hundreds of feet of, uh, of, of other sediments and um, but but it also uh, talks about um, thorium which is um, a possible fuel for nuclear reactors and it's in a great abundance but it is a it is a, it is an element found with heavy rare earths which means that um, that there is a, a a problem when you try to uh, extract heavy rare earths. You also extract thorium. You want to uh, split the thorium from the heavy rare earths. You want to separate them, and this causes problems because the I believe that the the Department of Defense or the Department of Energy. I can't remember. I can't recall which exactly have. Uh, uh, classified thorium as a source material for nuclear uh, <clears throat> for nuclear purposes so you can if you if you hit thorium with a neutron and it absorbs it uh, after a couple of decay steps it turns into uranium 233 which can which, which can be used to build a bomb now people will be up in arms when I say stuff like that but it's true um I'm not going to deny it. Uranium-233 can be used to build bombs. It's probably just as easy as getting Uranium-235 or Plutonium. So, you know. But that doesn't mean that it isn't a valuable resource. So, uh, Jim Kennedy and John Kutch, if I recall right, were working on a thorium bank, which was basically a building which serves as a repository for thorium, which, you know, is uh, uh, built according to the high safety standards and such. Not that it is necessary, because you can simply pile it up somewhere in a field and nothing remotely dangerous would ever happen, but, you know, because it's a source material, um, it's highly regulated, and this means that you 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 can't really get the heavy rare earths out of the ground in the U.S. Now China, they extract the heavy rare earths and they just chuck thorium the the the, the tailings which which include thorium but also a bunch load of other elements but also leaching agents and such. They just chuck it into a big lake. It's called uh, Lake Bauta, which is in uh, in in Mongolia somewhere. Um, yeah. So I really, really, really recommend a sellout by Victoria Bruce if you're interested in that kind of uh, stories. Finally, uh, you can see that I've uh, 
I've progressed a significant bit. So I'm writing my fourth book, which is called Climate Zero Hour. And I'm already, you know, about 74 pages in. Which means that, you know, there's no there's no uh, definite end ending to a book. I, I can't tell you whether it will take another 100 or whether it will take 50. I don't know. But generally, my books tend to end somewhere between, you know, 130 pages and 200 pages. So I'm pretty, pretty well underway. It's going pretty good. So you can see it here. This progress, you know pretty happy with it um so that's it uh, let's see uh, is there anything else i want to show you so um boom, 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 boom. i've just uh, i've just tweaked my computer a little bit uh, let's see if you understand any of it <laughs> so my computer is a six core ryzen 1600x which normally runs at a uh, speed of, uh, where is it? 3600 megahertz, but it doesn't show. And I boost, I boost, oh no, it, it says it right here. So right now it's, it's not being, it's not on the heavy load, so you don't see it, but I overclocked it. So uh, to press out another 300 megahertz megahertz out of it and uh you know see what what kind of impact it would have on my uh on my uh productivity so which means you know if i want to um, I, i'm going to compile this video later on and it's going to take as long as it uh, as i've been recorded so it's about 30 minutes right now and you know, um, some people don't like these kinds of videos. That's okay. If you don't like it, fine. Um, but I need to vent. And I'm venting right now. This is my venting video. Um, yeah. Um, and there's the space reactor. Uh, let's see. The space reactor. I just uh, had it right here. One second. Uh, so NASA is working on a new reactor or has been working on a new reactor um yeah 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 let's see where it is there it is nasa partners discuss future let's see so what you see here is the um is a possible it's called where is it i forgot the name i forgot the name i oh, yeah, it's called the keel power project and it's a very interesting proposition so what you see here are these uh, closed um closed air cycle uh piston turbines uh piston engines um so piston engines let's see because there was uh this is the Kilo Power Project. Let's see. Yeah, confidence. Because I had a PDF somewhere. And that's awesome. That was awesome. That was really, really, really awesome. So, so normally what we would do is we would send up a satellite like Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 and I believe Cassini. And, uh, you know, the, the trouble is the farther you get away from the sun, the less sunlight you can capture which means that at some point solar panels, you know, if you go, I believe, past Mars, solar panels are already becoming decreasingly, um, you know, they don't make any sense if you go into deep space from here. And uh, so you need a, you need a, a power source locally on the spacecraft. So what we use is RTGs, which are uh, radio um, radio isotopic thermal generators, which basically work on the piezoelectric principle. So because it's cold on one side and hot on the other, and the hot side is getting hotter, you get a uh, current. And um, so an RTG is basically a plutonium battery. 
you know, it, it has stored a tremendous amount of energy, which normally lasts for about, I don't know, 25, 30, perhaps even 50 years. I don't know. You stick it on the spacecraft and then you can go further into deep space, you know, can get past Mars and uh, get past the Jovian uh, systems and even past, uh, you know, uh, past Pluto and eventually even leave our solar system. And Voyager has done that. So Voyager is still good f until 2025, I believe, thanks to its RTG. But the problem is the RTG itself is very low power. Uh, you can't, if you want to attach a 500 watt building uh, lantern, uh, it, it, w it won't supply enough juice to get that, uh, get that thing going. You would get a very dim, if at all, you know very dim light so it's only a couple of light bulbs worth of energy that come out of it or power but the kilo power thing that's you know kilowatt and upwards to perhaps even 10 kilowatts so that opens up a whole new horizon of you know things we could do in deep space so they were thinking about uh, for instance uh um uh, doing uh doing um an ice fishing trip on europa for instance i believe it's europa don't know <laughs> uh, europa is the ice planet right let's see europa planet uh, uh yeah da, 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 da. europa is exclusive Let's see. I think it's Europa. Sometimes I'm, uh, I mix them up all the time. So I'm sorry. Let's see. Ice. Oh yeah. So what they want. So what happens on Europa is this: the 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 gravitational pull and the gravitational forces from Jupiter. They quench the the ice surface of Europa, so they know and they are confident that there's liquid water on Europa deeper within the ice shelf. So if there's liquid water, there's a possibility that there's microbial life or something like that. So what they want to do is they want to land a, a craft on Europa with uh, that can heat up the ice and you know bore through the ice sheet and get into the liquid water part, get into the ocean underneath it, and then we could perhaps you know discover things that you know that might not be alive. The chances are you know I don't know pretty big that there's no life there but <clears throat> it will be interesting to go nonetheless and for that to happen we need a kilowatt scale kilowatt scale <clears throat> and for that to happen we need a kilowatt scale uh, power source and uh, they think that it's uh, they think that they have a good contestant so what it does is it's <clears throat> Down here somewhere, there is a uranium uh, core. It works on the principle of fission, so there's um, there should there should be a critical mass down there, so that you can get a sustained fission reaction. And then uh, I believe that it was sodium-filled heat pipes heat up these engines, and these are closed. These are closed engines. So what happens is the air of the air that pushes the piston up heats up so it pushes the piston up and then it cools down again which makes another piston push down again um it's a uh, let's see because we also have uh, generators based on that principle uh, let's see what's the what's the name for the thing uh da, 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 da. Space for coverage, NASA. This is cool. Listen, if I, I just want to vent right now. I want to do cool stuff. Uh, looking at this, uh, 
Oh, there it is, the fact sheet. Ah, oh, yes, the fact sheet. So let's see. Oh, there's not much here. Uh, I don't know. I saw, I saw a better thing. I saw a better thing uh, at Twitter. At Twitter. Let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Where is it? Da -da 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 -da. Keto Par, so cool. Ah, yes, perhaps it's here. Seattle Friends of Vision. NASA, yes. Where's the link? NASA Golf. Uh, second. Keto Par, this is it. This is it. Yeah, this is it. This is amazing. Look at it. Look at it. So this is the core. There's there's uranium in here. These are sodium filled heat pipes. Uh, sodium filled heat pipes and uh, oh yeah, Stirling engines. These are Stirling engines. They say Stirling converters, but I think it's I think they mean a Stirling engine. And this this is a uh, they have two 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 types of Stirling engine, uh, one with a single with a single cylinder and one with two cylinders that are connected by a pipe. Let's see, uh, can I find it? Can I find it? Probably probably can. It's really cool. I love this stuff. I really 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 love this stuff. Stirling converter, yeah. Okay, that does this. Uh, let's see, it's based on the sterling. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is a high temperature and heated heat and drives the piston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ah, yeah, there they are. So here you can see, so this end heats up, pushes, pushes the other end down. And, and it's a reciprocating uh, principle. So, because there's cooling fins in this end, and hot air, hot air also moves this way. This one, this one will be pulled back, etc. You know, it's I'm I'm <laughs> I'm terrible at this stuff. If I don't script it, I'm terrible. <laughs> But at least I'm honest. But it's the beta type, as you can see. It's probably the beta type. It's just a single cylinder. And a, I don't see any... Uh, or it could be an alpha type. If this here is the cylinder and this here is the cylinder, there's a connecting pipe. But then I wonder how would they generate the electricity? Would it be uh, a tiny generator types? Or, you know, like a dynamo? Or I don't know. But it's really cool. So here you see uh, government missions going to Mars, deep space gateway, lunar surface operations, planetary nu nuclear electric propulsion, ocean worlds, <laughs> interstellar. Interstellar means getting out of our solar system and into another solar system. So it's pretty, pretty, f pretty far reaching because at this moment, you know, at light speed, it would take us three or four years to get to the nearest star. Uh, two, two or three years uh, to get to Proxima Centauri, right? Proxima Centauri. Uh, oh my God! Oh my uh, Proxima, Proxima Centauri. There it is. Four, four light years it would take us. So the cool thing is that we're finding. Uh, star systems with uh with pla uh, with planets around them all over the place right now kepler is, is finding you know tons of tons of stars with planets around them and if we get if we can somehow manage to you know let's say we could reach half the speed of light it would take a tremendous amount of money. Even the keto power thing <laughs> wouldn't get us there. Nor would the EM uh, drive, which doesn't work. The EM drive is a pipe dream. It's uh, it's already been debunked. But if we could manage to get there, you know, it would take us eight years to get there. And uh, another eight years 
No, no, no. And then, a f- and then four years to get a signal back. So it would take a total of 12 years to get a return on our investment. Simply getting a picture from Proxima Centauri after that, you know, it would probably need another, I don't know, a couple of years to get into the, you know, but, but I believe that Proxima Centauri doesn't have a lot of uh, planets. I, I don't know if it has. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Can I get a bigger map, please? But this is cool, isn't it? So that's it for my rant today. Uh, this space reactor... I'm geeking out over it. I really love that kind of stuff. You know, there's a, a flat top critical experiment. So this is basically the uranium core notional flight concept, which means that the uranium core will be here and the sterling converter assembly would be down there. So you also see these things here are, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, heat exchangers for cooling uh, let's see because there was another one yeah here you see titanium water heat pipe radiator oh that's not here this is a lithium hydro tungsten shielding a beryllium oxide neutron reflector that's rare stuff beryllium is pretty rare we, we <laughs> it's not uh, if you know for space missions I'd say yes do it please if that's the best stuff you can get, use beryllium. But if you want to do anything else with beryllium at a, re- at a big scale, it, it will be a problem. Let me show you. Let me show you. Beryllium USGS. So if you want to, you know, let's see, 2017 says here there's one company in utah mining bertrandite which is the ore that 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 holds beryllium so it's metric tons already and uh, well the inventory of beryllium is like less than 100 tons (laughs) that's that's nothing in the world of mining and the annual production rate is 220 no yeah the average production rate is 220 tons of beryllium so if you need a lot of beryllium for your project (laughs) reconsider (laughs) perhaps you can do it with something else but beryllium isn't a good idea to go forward because it's pretty rare and not a lot of people are making it so uh yeah, I, I, I'm happy to debate this video because uh, because I uh, I had, uh, you know, a little bit of fun. I'm going to examine this some more. Uh, I'm very happy that you're a subscriber of my channel. It would really help me out if you would help me get more subscribers or uh, Patreon uh, donators because, you know... Um, they make a, a big, a big difference in my life. As you have seen in the beginning of this video, you know, working with uh, this insurance, uh, this government insurance stuff about being uh, unable to work, which, you know, I, I, I can't work on a regular basis. It's it's impossible. I can work when I can set my own pacing. Everything is all right. Set my own pacing. That's, that's, that's the essential thing. And, you know, I don't want to let my time go to waste, and I hope that I can explain stuff to you and uh, make the world a better place. So, um, thank you for watching, if you stayed with me this long, <laughs> and have a nice day, and I promise I'll be back with a better video soon, uh, something which is, uh, you know, which has some higher production value, as uh, just uh, doing some screen capturing. Because as you can see, you know, I've got a very cluttered, very cluttered uh, desktop. Now that's uh, because I, you know, I need to play some games, let off some steam sometime. I'm, I'm tweaking my PC, trying to get some more out of it. So yeah, and there's Luke Skywalker. Don't forget, he is my hero. (laughs) Everybody needs a fictional hero. Luke Skywalker is it. He embodies the good. 
He wants to do good regardless of his temptations to the dark side. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.